I'm joined now by Antoine Kupan, who uh, has just made his exciting big move over to Croatia with HNK Rijeka. Am I saying that right? I'm not sure. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> I'm not yes, sure, yes, but obviously a big move for you, Antoine, coming over after after pretty much your whole career being at home in Ottawa. Um, so let's just maybe get started with what these these past maybe couple of weeks have been like for you. What it's been like kind of getting to getting involved in this Croatian team and, and how excited you are for this move. Yeah, I mean, the past couple of weeks have been pretty crazy after the Christmas break. Uh, I went over to Germany. I was there with the VfB Stuttgart, uh, which is a Bundesliga club, which is pretty well known, has a lot of history. Um, I was training there with the under 21s and the under 19s um, and things didn't quite go as planned. Things, let's say, didn't work, work out as I wish they would have. Uh, but that means that I wouldn't be where I am today, now in Croatia. Um, so how it worked, basically an agent called me, contacted my parents, uh, said, would you like to come to Rijeka? They are very interested. They want to bring you into the first team. Um, you know, they've put out a plan for me for the next years to come. Um, and I was very interested. And so right away, they flew me out. I came to visit the city. I saw the facilities. Uh, I got to, to, you know, meet the players, uh, see what the environment's like. And I really, really liked it. Uh, so for me, from there, it was, uh, I want to get started. I want to sign the contract as soon as possible um, and you get started and start training with the team. So what has the timeline been like? I'm not sure how long you've been there, how much of a chance you've had to start maybe getting integrated and start training. What has all, all that been like in, I don't know, the last couple of weeks or so? Uh, yeah, so basically, uh, when I arrived here, I was staying at the hotel at first. And it was kind of like waiting around, you know, the negotiations, the contract. Uh, it's, it's not easy. You know, it's my first professional contract in Europe. And it's, it's a whole different, different thing here. Um, you know, the market uh, is, is a lot bigger. Um, and so the negotiations took quite a bit longer uh, than expected. So I had to wait around and I was very impatient. Uh, but once I got, got started, I started two training sessions with the under-19s. Uh, then played a, a friendly match with them as well, 90 minutes. Uh, which was which was really good finally to, to get back on the field and, and get playing and also get my fitness up. Uh, that was important. Um, and I started just this week on Monday with the first team. Um, I trained with them. I already played a friendly match with them, got a couple minutes in. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been good. The level is obviously very high. Uh, the expectations are very high as well from the other players, the, the more senior players who have, you know, bigger profiles. Um, but yeah, my integration has been good. The only little thing that's more difficult is is, you know, the Croatian language. And I think that's a little bit of a barrier to integrate socially. Um, but, but I've got my Duolingo app loaded up um, and I've been working, trying to work on some, some Croatian basics. That sounds, that sounds about right. I'm sure, it's, I'm sure it's difficult at first, but you'll get there, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, just kind of to continue in a, in a footballing sense, what is your first impression of, of you know, the, the level that you're going to be playing at, the, the coaching staff and maybe what, it feels like their vision is for you at this club. Yeah, I mean, they made, they've made it very clear. I think the first couple of months, uh, it's going to be an, an adaptation uh, coming from Canada to Europe, uh, not only on the football, footballing side of things, but also, you know, living my, my own apartment, living away from home. Like you, you mentioned before, I've been in Ottawa for the past three years uh, playing professionally and now moving out. I mean, I'm finally 18. This is what I have wanted. This is what I've been dreaming of. Um, so I'm, I'm ready to do all the sacrifices uh, that are needed. But I think they've made it very clear the first couple of months is going to be training with the first team, um, trying to crack the squad, trying to get some some small minutes. Um, obviously, if I can um, prove myself uh, enough and also playing uh, regular, consistent minutes with the U19s and from there see what happens in the, in the second year. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I think they made it very clear. The coaching staff, you know, they believe in me. Um, I've spoke to them. They, they've, they've been very welcoming. Um, I've also gotten a lot of feedback in, in the past three days, just, just off of training um, and the friendly match we've had. Um, so, yeah, and, and the, level, the level is very high. The players are, are, have very high profiles, you know, some of them coming from Manchester City, another high profile from Bundesliga with Mainz. Um, so there are very high profiles in the team and a lot of, of, of quality players. Yeah, it seems like it. It seems like this is quite a good club in Croatia, right? You guys are in a title race at the moment, which is exciting. And there's, there's European spots on the line. So that's all got to be exciting as well for you. Yeah, for sure. I mean, playing in a European stage would be, would be a dream of mine. Um, and I'm only here to, you know, help the team achieve that uh, for next year. So whatever 
might take, you know, being that extra man in training to fill in the spot for the 11. As you mentioned, Antoine, obviously this is kind of a big move for you, a big leap to kind of go to Europe and go to this new level after, as we said, playing your whole pro career in Ottawa, in your hometown. Uh, just yeah. why, why do you think that it was the right time for you to make a move like this? Why were you, you know, just so comfortable with kind of making this big move at this stage of your career? Yeah, I think it, it was always a dream of mine to play professionally in Europe. And, and not only that, but I think the club is, is really the right club for me. Um, you know, the, the Croatian league has a lot of history in selling players. Uh, if we take the example of Dani Olmo to, you know, and using it as a stepping stone to get to the next level into the top five leagues, for example, in Europe. And I think uh, to be able to achieve my dreams and not only that, but to play for the national team as well, I think you have to make that step to Europe and make eventually make that step to the top five leagues. Um, so I think this is just a stepping stone. Uh, Rijeka is a club where they provide a, a lot of opportunities for young players to play, um, to show their talent, to show their quality, and to make the next move into the top five leagues uh, in Europe. Absolutely. And just maybe finally, what are you going to, when you, when you look back on your time playing in Ottawa, playing in a CPL for Atletico Ottawa and even for the Fury and all that, what are you going to remember and appreciate most from your time playing in your hometown as you kind of move on to other stages of your career? I think definitely, you know, the many moments that I've lived uh, at TD Place, uh, for example, from my debut to my first goal at TD Place, to just in general, the atmosphere, the fans, they've always been behind us. Um, they've always been so supportive and they're also, you know, we can have a, a genuine relationship with the fans. We can connect with them. Um, so I think they, they played a big role in within those three years. Um, and I'd say another thing as well is, is you know, the relationships that outside um, of the field, outside of the pitch, the relationship that I created with some of my teammates um, who are now some of, you know, my best friends who I speak to on a regular basis, um, who, you know, I have FaceTimes with. Um, and through the ups and downs as well, they can help me. Uh, they can guide me for some of the older players like Chris Manella or Drew Becky, you know, Brian Wright or Dylan or some of those guys to, to help me and guide me um, through, you know, their, their experience as well, their, their past um, in, in soccer. Absolutely. Well, Antoine, I'm sure everybody back in Ottawa will be watching closely as you get involved with this club in Croatia and start this new chapter of your career. So congratulations again. Thank you so much. Fernando, this is this has been a, a very, very interesting, exciting, challenging, I'm sure, off season for Atletico Ottawa. Um, but let's maybe start with before we get into some of the players that are coming in, let's start with one player that's departing the club. Let's, let's talk a little bit about Antoine Coupland, who obviously raised in the Ottawa region, played a significant role for the club in 2020, 2021. Um, but he's recently recently moved to Europe, signed in Croatia with with Rijeka in the Croatian league. Um, maybe Fernando, you can just speak a little bit about you know Antoine's time with the club and and just what it means to you guys, to Ottawa, and to the city as a whole for a player of Antoine's caliber to to move on and move up to Europe. Well, first of all, I'm going to start by saying that uh, we are very very happy for Antoine because I think this is a huge step on, uh, on his career uh, as a person and as a player, because I think that, uh, you know, right now he's going to live uh, abroad and uh, experience a complete different, uh, you know, football and, uh, and living out of his comfort zone, even if he was in a comfort zone here. Uh, but I think it's a, it's a huge step for, for him, uh, for the league, for our club. And uh, it shows that, uh, you know, uh, uh, here in Canada, in, in the CPL, uh, there are a lot of talented players, young players that, uh, as Antoine, can have an opportunity abroad. Uh, since the moment that we uh, launched the club back in 2020, I think uh, we acknowledge the importance of having uh, local players like Antoine in our, in our roster. Uh, I think that once uh, I remember then one, the first time that uh, he signed his professional contract, uh, he was, uh, I think, 16 years old uh, with us. And he was the youngest uh, CPL player uh, on that year. And since that moment until last season, I think uh, we saw a clear uh, evolution on, uh, on his, uh, his performances as a player on his body, uh, I always told him that uh, we catch him as a as a kid, 
and now we deliver it as a man because it is true that at that age, you know, his body uh, grows continuously. Uh, and uh, last year when he arrived for preseason, he, he really looked like, uh, you know, he was uh, two meters tall and, uh, and stronger and uh, faster. And, uh, and uh, he was really a, a man. And I think that it, uh, that really drive him uh, during the season. And uh, we are so happy that, uh, you know, he has made this, uh, this step on his career. These sorts of moves are important for the CPL and for the clubs, right? Just for players who are local to come up and, and get their start with CPL clubs and then move on as, you know, many players want to, right? This is important for the league and for the club, right? Yeah, it's, I think it's key. It's one of the goals and the mandate that we have as a club and as a league. Uh, I wish that he could have stayed with us a little bit longer uh, but um, it is true that, you know, uh, when, uh, when the call comes, you know, and, uh, and when you are ready, doesn't matter if you are 18, 20, 21, 26, you know, I think uh, that opportunities are there to be taken. And uh, I'm really glad that uh, Antoine uh, had this chance. I know that is uh, something that it was always in, in his mind, you know, to, to play abroad and to start his career uh, uh, out of uh, the country and explore other opportunities. And uh, I'm glad that, uh, you know, we could uh, provide that platform for, for him and for many other players that uh, I'm sure that it will follow, follow Antoine. We just want to continue that, that work, you know, continue working with the grassroots, with the local teams, promoting fr- football at a, at a young level. And uh, why not provide more opportunities and, uh, like Antoine uh, got this year? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, maybe while, while we're here, we should talk a little bit about what is still in Ottawa, right? Obviously, it's been a very, very exciting offseason for you guys with lots of lots of new players coming in. Um, even just this morning as we're recording, you guys announced the signing of Carl Hayworth. Can you maybe maybe walk us through a little bit of how you guys approached this offseason and what has been some of the thinking behind some of these big signings that you've get, you guys have made, you know, Max Tissot and, and Kevin Alleman and, and Ollie Bassett, all these players that are coming in. Maybe you can walk us through it a little bit. It's been, a, as you can imagine, a, a, a big and a challenging a start for, for, for Ottawa since uh, February 2020. Uh, when I remember the, the first time that I put my, my feet in Ottawa and it was minus 26, that was the first path of reality with the, with the situation here. Ten days after uh, COVID hit, and, uh, and our, cha- our plan changes dramatically, and we need to adapt really fast to the, the new reality, uh, uh, not being able to manage the club here and on site because with the travel restrictions, you know, uh, mostly we, we control and, and manage the club remotely, and most of the cases with the time difference, so during this, this offseason, I think is the first time in this uh, two years of our recent history that we really had the time to plan, to organize, to be here in Ottawa, to really enjoy the winter, because I can tell that I'm, I'm enjoying the winter, something that I wasn't expecting before. And that really is helping us, you know, to, to build a team, not only on the field, but also off the field that I think is something that uh, uh, we were missing in the past two years. You know, it's, it's not, you know, launching a club. It's, <laughs> it's creating everything, you know, from, from scratch. And that means, you know, uh, the equipment room, the locker rooms, the training field, the, the marketing team, the ticketing team, everything. And, and we really struggle in the past two years. So I think we are right now in a very, very good position. We have had the time to organize all this. And I think that that will also uh, is helping us to 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 be more focused and to have the proper structure to to provide a good team on the field. After the the results that we had in the in the past two years, where uh, those were not uh, something that we were expecting, I think that a lot of changes need to be made. As you know, we sat with Mista after the season, and we both decided to not continue this way. I think we needed a change. But we felt grateful about, you know, uh, how he contributed to the start of the team and how he helped with our recruitment team, make an announcement. Uh, and uh, we wanted, you know, to be together and surrounded by, by experienced players uh, on these foundations, you know, that com- can complement the players that were already here, you know, living all this uh, 
critical and, uh, and tough times at the beginning of the club. So I think uh, the first uh, the first thought was who can be these players, you know, that together with uh, the players that we already had and that uh, endure all the things that the club endure from the beginning can add on, you know, with experience and how we can complement these experienced players, some of them that were in Ottawa before, you know, that can help us to create and, and, and enhance and boost these roots with the community like Max, like Carl, with some other players, you know, that were in the CPL before and that had a, already a career and that uh, were known like uh, Kevin Alleman, like Nan Ingham, like Oli Vassett, like some Melvin, you know. And I think we are creating a very interesting mix, you know, with experienced players and young players like Zachariah Behus, Zach Roy, and some others that are coming on board too that I think it will put us in a very good position to deliver the results that the club is expecting for the 2022 season. Definitely, definitely. It's going to be exciting to to watch this club kind of come together. I guess just the the last thing, you kind of alluded to it there in the middle of your answer, but uh, I, I, I'm sure I'm sure fans are, are curious. Is there any kind of update you can give us on the search for a, a new head coach for Atletico Ottawa? Uh, yes, um, I think that uh, I, I can tell that we already have the coach. I think it's uh, it's been hidden for uh, for a few reasons, but uh, I'm pretty sure the next week we're going to be able to make it public. I know that is uh, something that uh, everybody has been waiting for, uh, including ourselves. But uh, even if uh, it, it's not been, you know, uh, unveiled in public, I can tell that we have been working uh, for. For a few months already with him and uh, his technical team on uh, building the preseason, building the training schedule for the year, building the roster. So uh, uh, I'm very confident that uh, we have made a, a good uh, a good uh, choice. We interviewed many people for the role, but I think uh, it's someone that uh, we know perfectly that belonged to, to Atletico de Madrid family for, for many years. And uh, I think that that will help us, you know, in order to continue building that philosophy and creating that connection with Atletico de Madrid, that we're parent club. I think it's a coach that has uh, a lot of pedigree and a silverware on his career. So he's uh, it's a young coach, but experienced coach. And hopefully we can share more details uh, next week when we make it public. Fantastic. Well, we're all definitely very excited to to hear that announcement and to 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 finally finally know well fernando i think that covers it all so thank you so much for chatting this morning no problem thank you charlie